hello, my name is Nicolas Glasalia and today I will do a review of my presentation about uh, Georgia and Caucasus region. Uh, my first presentation actually, which took place in Vermont and I analyzed the video and we decided to split the uh, video review in a 16 pieces and I'll try to introduce how it how it went the first part of inter uh, first part of uh, presentation went uh, the event starts with the presentation of the Fermat Arts Foundation uh, by Tatiana Ishutkina we're presenting the Fermat Arts Foundation then the main part of the presentation begins the speaking uh, speaker stands on the rostrum I, sp I stand at the uh, rostrum and begin to introduce myself after a few details the presenter gets down to business and starts talking about the georgia so i presented myself i said that i'm from georgia i'm a student from Tbilisi state university and after i we took a business so uh, the presentation on Georgia begins with a general geographical explanation. In particular, the presenter says that the country Georgia is located in the Caucasus region, which in turn uh, is bet between uh, Europe and Asia to like make some kind of picture to for the for the people to imagine how it how where's the where it is lo located in the world globe and also mentioned the strategic location and the silk road um, after a brief overview of the location the presenter mentioned the prehistoric human footprints and the artifacts found in southern georgia that confirm the first human f footprints outside of africa yeah so uh, uh in the beginning of the presentation, uh, I think it's important to show the uh, important part of the Georgia that the uh, beginning of the modern civilization started in the Georgia. Uh, first, as to say, the first steps were uh, stepped uh, on the Georgia and um, I was talking about at the presentation. I was talking about uh, um, at the Manisi region, which um, exactly this exactly the this place, uh, namely in the Manisi place where the prehistorical footprints and the skulls were found of ancient people, and. Um, I explained, I showed uh, by the slide this, uh, these artifacts. And after prehistoric, uh, prehistoric history, we continue to talk about the sources of ancient civilization where Georgia is mentioned. It is also uh, mentioned that at the time uh, the, there were two ancient states on the territory of Georgia and there are references to both states in the ancient Greek literature, uh, literature and mythology. So yeah, um, to be clear, uh, there was not Georgia at the ancient times. I mean, during the ancient Greek civilization, there was a two states, Diochia um, and Col Colha and Iberia, sorry. And uh, there are many sources that are which are mentioned these two states um, on the territory of modern Georgia and I just wanted to show the view from the ancient uh, civilization most uh, mostly the famous ancient civilization as the Greek civilization how describe it the, how described the Georgian mod, uh, old Georgian uh, places so after that, the fourth part of the presentation is developed to the agrarian culture of Georgia and the importance of the vines in Georgian culture. It is said that uh, there are more than 500 varieties of wines in Georgia. And it is also said that Georgia is considered the country of wine because the first proven 
artifacts of winemaking were found in Georgia. Yeah, so I mentioned that in my uh, presentation, just to show that agrarian culture is like uh, uh, unsplitted, uh, unsplitted part of the Georgian culture, because uh, Georgians, Georgians were famous from ancient times because of their farming skills and especially for wine making because the wine is associated with us the um, religion which is a really great part of our culture and i also mentioned that georgia is the motherland of uh, wine because i because the first uh uh, method uh, vessels and uh, artifacts were found uh, in Georgia, which dated back in eighty thousand years ago. So it's making the Georgia the birthplace of the wine. Uh, and finally, the presenter said that all regions of Georgia have their own independent and unique uh, culture, which is reflected in the food and dances of Georgia. So. Um, Georgia is really diverse uh, by itself. It's uh, there are uh, more than uh, fourteen uh, regions, and each region have its unique culture. And I mentioned that, but unfortunately, I didn't uh, talked about talk much about the dances, uh, which I think it must be improved. And I didn't talk about the food also because I think it doesn't make sense until someone can taste it. So I didn't give uh, this part a big time. And in the next part of the presentation, in the fifth part of the presentation, we continue to talk about Georgia's relationship with the ancient powerful states and Georgia's relationship with the neighboring countries after the birth of Christ. Yeah, so I said that uh, um, uh, ge geographical location of Georgia uh, is more eastern, which makes Georgia, which made the Georgia in that times the only uh, only uh, state, only Christian state, because most of the time uh, Armenia was um, occupied by Muslim countries, and uh, we had a really, really hard uh, relationship with our neighbors because mostly it was a big. Uh, our neighbors were big empires, and they had a. Um, influence uh, on us so we we always struggled with uh, with the relationship with our neighbors it's also mentioned that georgia adopted christianity in the fourth century and uh, this was the beginning of the confrontation with eastern world yeah as i said at the end of the part the presenter says that the ancient christian buildings uh, miraculously escaped uh, destruction and adds uh, that the uh, country's national script is one of the 14 scripts in the world yeah so uh, to look at this uh, first Georgian um, uh, first Georgian church we're uh, building the 5th century is the first in the first Georgian capital of Sketa and after this uh, we have many artifacts uh, many modern uh, many a church, all the church in modern times, and I just underlined that that it is incredible how it survived during this uh, this hard confrontation with uh, oh, look at the fights and the wars which was Georgia in these centuries. And I also end of this uh, section. I also mentioned that the Georgian script is the one of the forty scripts in the world. I underline that, and then comes the sixth uh, session, sixth part of the session. The presentation continues with a brief history of how Georgia became Christian in the fourth century, and the list four preachers who were the first to spread the new religion in the country. Yeah, so I mentioned four. Uh, 
four preachers which came uh, from uh, south in Georgia and uh, I didn't mention them uh, describing the Georgian flag because they are some somehow they are uh, on the, our national flag so four uh, four crosses are represent these four uh, these four preachers so I didn't mention that and I think this this must be it must be improved and after this part of the conversation begins about the unification of Georgia and the golden age of Georgia uh, which was in the 11th 20th centuries it is uh, about the Georgian achievements of uh, this period in the development of literature and education as well as the precedence of the first parliament yeah uh, so I, I I give it enough time uh, to talk about the golden age of Georgia, but I think it was not enough. I didn't talk about I, I talked about the importance uh, of education at that times, but I didn't talk about uh, much about the epic poem which was written by the Georgian poet Shotarus Tavelli. Um, denied in the panther skin and I, I think it must have a much big uh, big time so I think it must be improved and yeah at the end I talked about the first precedence of parliament which which did not was which was not realized actually and I didn't talk much about the kings. Uh, I think it's a big role of the kings uh, to create the golden age. So I think the kings uh, need to be appreciated for this. Uh, and the seventh, uh, the, after that, the presentation goes to discussion of uh, ethnography of Georgia. The conversation begins with the ethnic diversity and tolerance of Georgia, which is confirmed by the ancient international sources, as well as the presence of uh, shrines of various religious demonstrations of the capital of Georgia, which uh, to, which is Tbilisi, which uh, have been uh, uncharged in the city center for many centuries. Um, yes, I talked about the religion. Uh, I think this part went well because I mentioned uh, every single religion which was uh, important in Georgia and had a big role in the city life. I mentioned that uh, the Georgia never had uh, bad sentiments against the Jews. Uh, they also tolerated uh, the Muslim population of Georgia besides they were uh, mostly they were invaders and uh, even from old times uh, in Georgia was the fire worshipper church called uh, Ageshta and all these churches were located on the same place so I mentioned that at the, at the presentation. So I think it's all good with this part. And after we go in eight part part eight of the presentation, uh, and after the golden age and the diverse tolerate past, the conversation uh, begins about the Middle Ages, which turned out to be quite difficult for Georgia, even through during he, this period, Europe flourished and it was the peak of the Renaissance. The speaker says that Georgia became the target of many invaders during this period. Uh, yeah, so Middle Ages were uh, really hard for Georgia. But uh, to be honest, there was not, uh, m there was no uh, very important um, events, uh, especially to explain to uh, foreigners because uh, it was mostly the domestic problems. Georgia was struggling, and I mentioned that, but there was not that specific problems which I think I could uh, mention. So I think. It's, it's all good with this part. I just mentioned that uh, Georgia was very uh, Georgia was on the very low point at the Middle Ages during the Middle Ages. 
uh, in the part nine after this difficult period uh, the presenter presenter already talks about the events of the 18th century where the russian georgian relationship relationship begins and uh, the next 200 years of occupation and the abol uh, abolition of auto after uh, after uh, his time in the russian empire as the narrator says after the revolution the russian empire began to designate and a few centuries managed to gain independence so uh i was uh, i talked about the from from middle ages i went straight to the 8th century where georgian and russian relationship started so it started really hard because uh, the first uh, event was was the occupation of georgia uh, and i mentioned that uh, but i didn't i didn't uh, give a big time um, about uh, give didn't give a big time 1890th century uh, georgia in the russian Russian Empire, so I think I can add a few few uh, few facts about it because it's uh, two hundred years, and I think there must be some some good events and some interesting events for the public, especially uh, Georgia's uh, Georgia Georgia's culture Georgia's culture influence on the whole Russian Empire. So I think yeah, I. I think it will be better to add something uh, about the Russian Empire. And after that, I went to the collapse of the Russian Empire in the beginning of the 20th century. It is said that the presentation uh, Georgia's independence took a while. However, according to the speaker, Georgia uh, caught up and adopted a co constitution which was one of the most modern and democratic in the Europe. And uh, at the beginning of the 1921, uh, according to speaker, Georgia became a victim of Soviet Russia and lost its independence again. So yeah, I said that. Uh, Georgia was uh, independent for only three years, and uh, I think uh, it's it's enough for that because three years is three years are really small time amount of time, and I couldn't add anything. Um, maybe I could add something uh, about the Russian revolutions to clarify the events where taking place at that time to people but anyways um, uh, I think uh, yeah I think I, I think I can add something about the events uh, of um, some facts about uh, creating of Soviet Union and uh, in part 11 uh, after this the present uh, presenter temporarily stopped uh, the presentation and the audience focused on the maps he talked about earlier and chose a copy of uh, Act of Independence and old footage of the day uh, and Act of Independence uh, adopted. So um, I didn't follow uh, parallelly the um, slides and it really struggled me because uh, it's it's taking it's taking time and it must it may be not be as clear as the uh, synchronically doing this for the public I see it wasn't comfortable so I think it uh, it is really important to improve this part of the uh, this part of the presentation to make sure that the uh, sl slides are following the text and the 12 uh, in the next part of the presentation we are, are already taking about the, the talking about the soviet georgia the industry progress of georgia and the development of infrastructure specific in this, uh, industries and the fields that emerged in georgia during the soviet period are mentioned 
on the importance of tourism and appearance of Georgia in the international arena. Uh, yes, so I talked about the achievements and the positive sides of uh, communism in Georgia, in so Soviet Georgia, but uh, unfortunately I didn't mention the people uh, which was which were which raised and born uh, which were raised and born in the soviet union and i didn't mention that uh, georgia was struggling actually because um, soviet machine was um, killing in independence idea of countries and the individualism of the country so it's really struggle so it was really big struggle and big issue at that time and uh, it was really important to mention the people who were fighting for georgia's um, identity and independence at even at the soviet occupation by their uh, art um, by their uh, political uh, uh, pol political status so i think i may be uh, it will be better to add some more information about 20th century although uh, also i i think it's important because of the 20th century is more close to at these times and it's more obvious for public to understand and also i didn't mention uh, the stalin uh, he was the one of the big figures of 20th century so i think it will it will be better if I do this to mention the Stalin in Georgia's, uh, Georgia's history in 20th century. And uh, 13, after the overview of so uh, Soviet Georgia, the presenter is already moving go on to second declaration of independence, which followed the collapse of Soviet Union in 91. And he talks about the tragic fate of the first president of Georgia and the resulting conflicts in the separatist regions. He also mentioned the war in the center of Tbilisi when the opposition overthrew the legitimate government. So, yeah, I think this part is fine. Uh, I talked much about this. I explained... Uh, uh, I explained uh, some events which were took place at that time, but uh, maybe maybe I maybe it's even it can be better described for you know, people because I think it's anyways was a short short introduction of nineties in Georgia. Um, I think I can add some some facts, but mostly I regret that I didn't didn't edit the end of the nineties uh, and start of the two thousands because um, Georgian uh, political orientation were uh, formed in the uh, start of the century. So I didn't mention that, and I think it's big mistake, and I think it, it must be improved. I have to mention the start of the ending of the 19th century and start of the 21st century. And part 15, after the keynote presenta presentation, the question and answer session begins. And the very first question was, um, oh yeah, uh, in the end of the presentation, briefly explained the state uh, managed system to Georgia and mentioned that fact that uh, today president of Georgia is the first woman elected by people yeah I mentioned that but I didn't mention many uh, really important um, uh, events what was happened in the f first two decades of 21st century I talked about the Rush Georgian Russian war also uh, but uh, I didn't uh, make in specific I didn't detailed it i just mentioned the two parts which was which is occupied at during time but i didn't uh, talk to sp specifically and i didn't mention the little detail so i think i think it will be legit to add uh, more events from 
last two decades. And after starting the question and answer session, the very first question was um, already read, already ready for me, let's say, and. Uh, Uh, mainly questions w were directly related to Georgia, and I, I'll I'll read the questions which were asked me asked to me. Uh, so first question was: Do you still feel pressure and influence from Moscow in Georgia? Uh, second was: What's part of the Georgian territory are currently occupied by Russia? Third was: Is um, there are uh, still active conflict uh, in occupied territories. Uh, fourth, uh, did Georgia participate in uh, World War One? How big is Georgian territory? Does Georgia have an oil? Uh, what ethni ethnicities are mostly living in Georgia? What education system are you are we using in Georgia? What kind of connection does Georgia Iberia have with the Spanish Iberia? Why are white people called Caucasians? Uh, have you noticed climate change in Georgia? What does the Georgian flag mean? Yeah, so uh, it is great thing to make analyze from questions. It shows you what did you missed in this presentation. And I think this answering these questions give me a lot of um, answers for my presentation for future presentations so all in all i think um, presentation was not that bad but i think um, i had a really big uh, i had a really uh, a really big work to do with that so this is the summary of reviewing my first presentation which held which was held in the vermont Thank you very much.